Hello, Aternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Aternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. Dynamic change in the history of Aternum last night as the marauding forces of DG-1 overcome the syndicate forces of secrets for control of the forests of Brightwood. KOTT news crews were unable to secure an interview with DG-1 leadership. As such, no word yet on their commitment to the cathedral. Temporary market restrictions are in effect and impacting the community of Aternum yet again today. Citizens attempting to trade or barter at this time may likely encounter an impasse. Turning to the weather, and it's another beautiful morning in Aternum until early afternoon when matinee invasions arise around the coastline of the island with one early evening flare-up later. Four officially sanctioned simulated fantasy combat resolutions on the books for tonight brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it's cardboard. Up first... The Covenant forces of Lost Templar assail the Syndicate forces of Secrets for control of Ebonscale. Lost Templar forces fighting on back-to-back -back nights and last night's mayhem in the mud was sure to have been exhausting. For Secrets, their third defense of the Bamboo Forest Preserves and Medicinal Hot Springs of Ebonscale, having only acquired it two weeks ago. Then, the Covenant forces of Double attempt to seize the Spice Ports of First Light from the Syndicate forces of Duranda Dogs. Newcomers Double appear to have their noses trained on the saffron and cinnamon supplies abundant in First Light. But the reigning Spice Lords of Duranda Dogs are the alphas around here, so if you come sniffing for something that isn't yours, there's gonna be a fight. Meanwhile, the Marauders of Context challenge the Covenant Forces of Regime for their championship title and the right to rule the region of Everfall. Context failed in their inaugural bid for land in Brightwood against the Forces of Secret, so of course they're ready to take on the champs. For Regime, their Neverfall streak sits at 6, only 4 behind the current record holder Elysian with 10. Fighting against split forces should work to their advantage. In the nightcap, Context forces will play 2 with the forces of Regime, this time for the financial capital of Windsward. Tonight is the second time Context has gone to war, and they're fighting the two most tenured regional rulers. That being the collective forces of Regime, who have enjoyed the robust income associated with controlling the most frequently utilized trading halls and crafting stations. But will recent market closures bring them crashing down? We'll have the outcomes and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News. Hello, Aternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Aternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. Historical moment last night as KOTT news crews investigated the Lazarus Pits. For the first time in over a decade, it was me being dragged through a dungeon. Recent adjustments to gear score calculations negatively impacted this reporter, but not so much that this wasn't easy. No change in the dynamic of Eternum last night as all four great houses went out against their would-be conquerors. Today's forecast calls for sunshine all morning long with an unusual matinee invasion in Brightwood. Later in the evening, various tropical El Ninos will bring invasions inland around the island. Three submissions for simulated fantasy combat resolution tonight. Brought to you by LARPCO brand foam core simulated combat gear. Remember, if it's not LARPCO, it's cardboard. First up, the marauders of DG-1 continue their berserking in the fishing port town of Reekwater against the forces of Primordis Virtue. DG-1 forces have hit the shores of the island running full sprint into every fight they can pick. But picking a fight against Primordis Virtue may be their final picking, for fighting a former founding great house can be quite the fight to pick. Then... The Syndicate forces of Wabbits of War challenge the instigators for the northeasternmost region of Morningdale. Wabbits of War are making their second attempt to secure land, this time shifting their focus to an outer region, where the instigators have recently begun a civics works project on the Morningdale canal system in order to expand its functionality and irrigate their growing strawberry fields. Tonight's fight could change all that. In the final fight, 
The Syndicate Forces of Hero attack the Covenant Forces of Great Value Kokiotos for the primary oil reserves of Weaver's Finn. The Finn has been in disarray these last few weeks as several companies jockey for control of the peat moss oil fields, including Hero, who tries again to take out the reigning great house currently presiding Great Value Kokiotos, now in gold and yellow because they've felt the spark. Be sure to tune in for complete coverage and reactions from the citizens at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News. Hello, Eternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Eternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. No change in the dynamic of Eternum last night as all defending great houses hold off their respective attacks. KOTT news crews were on the scene in Morningdale at 11 for reactions and commentary and caught up with instigator leadership. We got to finish the canal. But yes, the canal will be done. Uh, we are going to finish the irrigation system so bad fish can grow as hemp because uh, the ruderalis crop uh, did not do so well this year. Turning to the weather, and it's looking pretty nice all morning long again, well through the afternoon until early evening when northern cold fronts and southern El Ninos will push into the island, bringing with them invasions colliding in the central corridor, with slight chance of microburst late. Big fight on the west coast tonight, brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it's cardboard. Tonight, the Syndicate forces of Violet Flame assault the Covenant Company, totally not regime, for dominion over the Monarch's Bluff. Newcomer Violet Flames make their first attempt to secure land on the island, hopeful to be successful in the starting region. For totally not regime, having only one fight to totally focus on gives them the option of resting a few of their starters. But will they? We'll have the outcomes and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News. Hello, Eternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Eternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. No change in the dynamic of Eternum last night as the syndicate forces of Violet Flame get turned away by the monarchs of the bluff, totally not regime. Being a slow fight night, this reporter spent the evening addressing the dietary needs of a bear requesting fresh fish. Unfortunately, fishing was part of this reporter's retirement plans. And so, I sought out local resident Michael Shields for tips on getting started. Fishing involves three basic steps. Casting, hooking, and reeling the sucker in. And believe you me, size matters. That's it? You'll need some bait. Applying the simple lessons I learned, I quickly became adept at reeling in some whoppers. KOTT News will continue to investigate how this talking bear holds the key to unlocking the island's mysteries. Meanwhile, in Windsward, the tent city population of the Northern Gate continues to grow, as does the frustrations of the residents. Citizens are advised to expect delays exiting the Northern Gates. Alternatively, the Westgate Bridge Bypass remains free of traffic. Turning to the weather and surprise, surprise, it's another beautiful day all morning long, with little chance of invasion later. Three official simulated fantasy combat resolutions in the books for tonight. Brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it's cardboard. The Covenant forces of Milkit return to challenge the marauders of El Dawnguard for control of the deep forests of Brightwood. Unable to find their missing boat, the former Great House of Milkit returns after a month-long hiatus. El Dawnguard make their first official defense of the forest, but it's usually much easier to defend than to attack for now. Next, the Covenant forces of Young Money assail the Syndicate forces of Weeptile TTV for the secondary oil reserves of Cutlass Keys. Newcomer Young Money seeks to impose their history on Cutlass Keys, declaring that the keys will be theirs again. For the company comprised of one level 60 at a time, compromising on their claim to Cutlass Keys can't be done, so they'll compete for 30 minutes to complete the conflict. In the nightcap, the Marauders of Land Lords slog uphill against the forces of corrupted kings for control of the always restless shore. One presumes you can't be a landlord if you don't own land, so tonight's outcome is especially important for the attackers. 
The anarchy at the archipelago continues with corrupted kings making their third defense of the muddy island keep. We shall see if they are settling in or becoming complacent. Be sure to tune in for complete coverage and reactions from the citizens at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Schlott, KOTT News. Hello, Eternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Eternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. Dynamic change in the history of Eternum last night as the marauders of Landlord wrestle away the restless shores from the syndicate forces of corrupted kings. And the covenant forces of Young Money claim the secondary oil reserves of Cutlass Keys from Weeptile TTV. KOTT news crews caught up with Young Money leadership after the combat. Uh, you know, uh, well, first I want to say, too, that uh, Weptile TTV uh, put up a good fight. Props on them. I just feel like uh, we had the upper hand today. Uh, would love a rematch for them if uh, if they're welcome to it. And just wanted to uh, say to the citizens of Eternum, I promise uh, we'll take good care of Cutlass Peace. The oil reserves are well protected and everyone is welcome here. Uh, but in the meantime, CK is in good hands. And we're just happy that uh, Young Money is back on the map. We've got a lot of great members, and uh, oh, also thank you to our sponsor, LARPCO. Requests for interviews with members of the Landlords were met with no comment. Today's weather forecast is sponsored by Knights of the Turntable, syndicate refugees seeking company for expeditions, OPRs, portals, and chest runs, as well as miscellaneous PvP opportunities should contact Mansa Musa in-game about becoming a squire. Speaking of PvP, for the first time in recorded history, five simulated fantasy combat resolutions in one night. Brought to you by the patent-pending foam core technology of LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it's cardboard! Opening the night's action are the Covenant forces of Pirate Hooligans Limited attempting to plunder the bamboo forest preserves and medicinal hot springs of Ebonscale from the Syndicate forces of Secrets. Little is known about the Pirate Hooligans, but if you're calling yourselves the Pirate Hooligans, you're probably not coming with the best of intentions. In order to protect the Onsen Resort operators and culinary artisans of Ebonscale, the forces of Secrets will do all they can to ensure those Hooligans come no closer than the Bamboo Forest. Up next, the Covenant forces of Skyhold assault the Duranda Dogs of the Syndicate for control of First Light and its abundant spice flow. More newcomers continue to assemble and arise from the countless refugees arriving to the island daily, and Skyhold has set its ambitions on the abundance found in First Light. For Duranda Dogs, this will be their third defense of the saffron-rich region, and they are confident in their ability to control the spice. Meanwhile, the Syndicate forces of Hero hike into the forests of Brightwood to engage the marauders of El Dawnguard. This will be Hero's third attempt to secure land in Eternum, having turned their attention away from the peat moss oil fields of Weaver's Fen. El Dawnguard has one of those names that sound like a royal defense squad. Surely, their first defense of the bear-infested northern forests will confirm their resolve. Meanwhile, yet again, the Marauders of Booty Clapital challenge the Covenant Forces of Regime for their championship title and the right to rule over Everfall. Regime's current Neverfall streak sits at seven as they continue to pursue the record currently held by Elysian of ten. Booty Clapital make their second assault on a Covenant Force in their effort to secure land and establish for themselves a capital. Cause with a name like Booty Clapital, you gotta have a capital. In the nightcap, the Syndicate forces of Exilium Aeternum attempt to secure the financial capital of Windsward from the Covenant forces of Regime. Always a smart play to make an attempt on the busiest crafting and trading hub on the island. Will the Exiles find a new home here? For Regime, holding Windsward is the linchpin to funding their tightly organized group of combatants. Surely we can expect their greatest efforts here tonight. We'll have the outcomes and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News. Hello, Eternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Eternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. 
No change in the dynamic of Eternum last night as all great houses hold out against their would-be attackers. Of note in Everfall, the champs of Regime retain their championship title belt and extend their Neverfall streak to eight. In an effort to secure more expedition orbs for the company, this reporter has begun progressing through their Kabbalist trials. More on that story as it develops. Turning to the weather, and it's another beautiful morning all day long, well into the afternoon. Until early evening, tropical showers emerge along the coastal regions of the island. Three simulated fantasy combat resolutions on tap tonight, brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it's cardboard. Up first, the marauders of Booty Clapital assault the syndicate forces of Primordus Virtue for control of the fishing port town of Reekwater. On back-to-back -back nights, Booty Clapital seeks a capital to make that booty clap ba bum ba bum Great House Primordus Virtue continues to improve the infrastructure of the hamlet and have been accommodating of groups disembarking for Lazarus. Later... The Syndicate forces of Hanacondo challenge the Marauders of the Instigators for the northeastern Death Wall border region of Morningdale. Syndicate forces attacking the stormy region of Morningdale are typically attempting to set up an observation post for the Death Wall. But the hipster home-brewing hippies of the Instigators have already planted their barley and hops, and their strawberry fields, and their lemon haze. They're not giving up that easily. In the nightcap, the Syndicate forces of Hero attempt to liberate the primary oil reserves of Weaver's Fin from the Covenant forces of Kyoto Yohai. Hero is the second company to have fought last night. Perhaps each are merely getting a feel for things around the island. But Kyoto Yohai aren't the type to tip their hands too easily and will execute their strategy based on composition and meta if no formal agreements are made beforehand. Be sure to tune in for complete coverage and reactions from the citizens at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News. Hello, Eternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Eternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. No change in the dynamic of Eternum last night, as all three great houses hold court over their refugee attackers. The regional stability provided KOTT news crews the opportunity to farm OPRs and expeditions. If you're looking for a chill syndicate company and have Discord, contact members of KOTT in-game. Turning to the weather and it's another sunny day all morning long again until late afternoon when cold fronts will sweep in from the north, driving invasions into the central regions of the island all the way to the Cape of First Light. Three simulated fantasy combat resolutions on tap for tonight. Brought to you by LARPCO brand foam core simulated combat gear. Remember, if it's not LARPCO, it's cardboard. First up, the syndicate forces of the Nomads. Challenge, Tent City Regime for the right to rule over the Monarch's Bluff. In an effort to alleviate the housing shortages of Windsward, Monarch Bluff leadership has taken in the residents of the Northgate Tent City. Appropriately, the Nomads have shown up, and it appears they've brought the fighting spirit of Tent City with them. Then, the Covenant forces of Milkit assault the Marauders of El Dongard for ownership of the bear-infested Great Forests of Brightwood. Milkit really has their eyes on the Northern Forests, making their second effort to secure it this week. El Dongard turned them away before, and intend to do it again. After all, they are an elite defense force. Meanwhile, the Syndicate forces of Wabbits of Wove will make war against the Covenant forces of Young Money for control of the secondary oil reserves of Cutlass Keys. Wabbits of Wove make their second attempt to control land on the island, having failed in their bid for Brightwood last month. For Young Money, they've been wrestling crocodiles and training in the mosh pit all week in preparation for their first defense of their newfound home. We'll have the outcomes and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News.